Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. Today, I'm reviewing the Audio-Technica AT4033A, which is a cardioid-only condenser microphone. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you around $400. Like always, I'll throw some affiliate links in the description down below. For this review, I have the microphone running directly into the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen, gain is set at 1 o'clock, recording 24-bit 48 kilohertz. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post, so check the doobly-doo, or the lower third, to see what a diddly did. And now, let's talk about what comes in the box. First off, the microphone comes in this microphone storage box. You will, of course, get the microphone. You'll get a shock mount, which fits the microphone through friction, a dust cover, which goes over the microphone and the shock mount, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, and a little bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, I really have no complaints. It has an all-metal body as well as a metal mesh grill which doesn't have excessive give to it. As we move around the microphone on the rear, we will find two switches. The first one being a negative 10 decibel pad. The second being an 80 hertz high pass filter at 12 dB per octave. On the bottom of the microphone, you will find the XLR port. And if it matters to you, this microphone is made in Japan. Then as far as the specs, this microphone has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 30 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 32 dB, a max SPL with the pad engaged of 155 dB, an EIN of 17 decibels, and an impedance of 100 ohms. Now I am spinning around the 4033 to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around the microphone to 180 degrees, here is the rear of the mic. Continuing to the second 90 degree angle, here we are. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. And now we are going to test the plosives even though I can't eat pizza because I'm trying to be healthy. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect, and here's how it's sounding with all the mouth clicks and noises. Gross. Now I'm about three inches off of the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth, and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about one foot away from the 4033A, about two feet away from the 4033A, and about four feet away from the Audio Technica 4033A. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, now I am typing on the SAD W and the spacebar keys. Now here is how the microphone sounds in a well treated room. And here is how the 4033A sounds in a completely untreated room. Now, in order to see how effective the provided shock mount is, I'm going to tap on my desk to see how much of that noise it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm. Now I am going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Again, I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect, and currently the high pass filter is turned off. And now I have switched on that 80 Hz high pass filter, and you should hear quite a bit of the low end get cleaned up but here is how it sounds. Now we're going to test the negative 10 dB pad. To do this, I am going to hold a relatively consistent note and then engage the pad to see if it is an immediate attenuation or if it smooths out, smooth, smooths out the attenuation over time. Uh... Uh... 
And now, like always, we're going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone we're reviewing and a bunch of other microphones on the market so we can see how it stacks up against the competition and hear it in context of its competitors. We'll start on the microphone that we're reviewing. This is the 4033A, six inches away, gain set at one o'clock, and here's how it sounds. We are starting on the 4033's little sibling. This is the Audio-Technica AT2020. This costs around $100. I am six inches off. My gain is still set at one o'clock. Check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these in post, and let's do a bunch more. Back again on the 4033A, nothing has changed. Here's how it sounds. Let's jump to another microphone. Now we are on the neat King B version 2. This goes for about $170 or $180. Six inches off, gains at one o'clock, none of that has changed. But here is how this sounds in comparison to a microphone that's more than two times the price. Let's do more. For a third time, here is the 4033A. Nothing has changed still, and here is how it sounds. Let's go to another mic. Next, we are on the Lewitt LCT 440. This costs around $270. Cardioid only condenser microphone, six inches off, gain set at one o'clock. And here is how this sounds compared to the 4033A. Let's jump back and do four more, I think. In case you forgot how I sound on this microphone, this is the 4033A. Let's go to another one. Now we are on the Rode NT1. This also goes for about $270. This is a cardioid only condenser microphone, six inches off, gain set at one. Check the lower third and let's jump back to the Audio Technica AT4033A. I always lose track of how many I have done, but this is the 4033A. Let's do another comparison. Now we are on the 4033's direct sibling. This is the AT4040. This goes for $100 less at $300. No pad, no high pass filter. Six inches off, gain still set at one o'clock. Check the lower third and here is how it sounds compared to the 4033. Which one do you like better? Let's jump back and do a couple more. I think that we have two more microphones to go. So first, this is the 4033A. Let it cleanse your palate and let us jump to the next microphone. Next, we are on the Shure KSM32, another cardioid-only condenser microphone, no pad, no high-pass filters. This microphone now goes for $600. It's gone up in price. Crazy. Six inches off, gain at one o'clock, did I say that? Here's how it sounds. Let's go back to the 4033 and do one final comparison. What do you think it's going to be? Did you know that currently I am on the Audio-Technica AT4033A, six inches away with my gain set at one o'clock? Well, now you do. Next microphone. Very good, you got it right. The final microphone we are on is the Neumann, hello Neumann, U87, hate, 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 hate. I am six inches off, my gain is set at 1130 because this is a hot one. Cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no high pass filter. This goes for $3,700. Not a fair comparison. This is the control from video to video so you can hear how I sound from video to video. That's why I do it. But there you go. Let me know in the comments which of these microphones was your favorite and let us jump to the Muzak test, music test. <laughs> Do you think that this will be a fart that will be legend? Only one way to tell. Hey, I think I hit that last note. Also, I am sorry to deceive. There is no fart. Actually, wait. No, there is no fart. <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry to lie to you. Let's go to the conclusion. <laughs> this just gets stupider every time. <laughs> conclusion time. Okay, so I wouldn't classify the AT4033A as a particularly exciting sounding microphone, but now having used it, this has taken the throne as my favorite condenser microphone from Audio-Technica. And first up as far as pros has to be the off-axis coloration. Not only did I find it inoffensive in places, but in other places I actually found it quite pleasing. I kind of enjoyed it in certain areas, which is very rare. And the second pro is the build quality of this thing is very nice. But then we get to the cons, and the first one for me is the negative 10 dB pad switch. It sounds a bit noisy, which could be a bad solder on my microphone, but also it allows for a very audible pop, which could damage speakers or your headphones or even your ears. So when you're engaging that pad, you need to be very aware of what you're doing, what your speakers are set, speakers are set to, and what your headphones are set to. Secondly, with a self noise of 17 dBA, that is a bit high. It's probably not going to be an issue for everybody, but if you are trying to achieve super low noise recordings, this isn't going to be very conducive to that. Third, the shock mount isn't the most effective because it does allow in a bit of low end, which was apparent when I was tapping on the boom arm. So if you have a lot of low sound sources near this microphone, you need to be aware of that and maybe consider engaging the high pass filter. And lastly, I always complain about this. If you're giving me a shock mount, give me a hard mount. It makes miking up sound sources in very tight areas much easier, and microphones should make our lives easier, not more difficult. And now, what are my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone? On the electric guitar, I thought it worked quite well here. It doesn't give you that typical aggressive sound that a lot of people enjoy, but it gives you a nicely controlled low end, a bit more of a forward and detailed midsection, and then the top end, it's there, but it doesn't get as sizzly as a lot of other large diaphragm condensers on a high gain amp. So if you're going for that tamer, more calming, easier to listen to sound, I think this offers that quite well. Next up on the acoustic guitar, I think that's my least favorite application for this microphone. It does give you a very tight and controlled low end. Then it gives you this forward and very detailed midsection, which sounded really cool and unique on the acoustic. And then the top end is there, but it's certainly not the dominant sound character. And I would just personally prefer a more lively sounding microphone on the acoustic. But if this is all you have, you can get very very usable sounds for this instrument. Next up for singing, I think this microphone can work perfectly fine. The low end didn't have any issues and you will be high passing that anyway. The mid section is forward and very smooth sounding. I enjoyed the mids quite a bit. Then the top end is there, it's not dominant, but it does have a little bit of an artificial tinge in the upper end if you listen a little bit more closely, but I think it can still work for singing just perfectly fine. And finally for spoken word, I liked it for this application, but I did run into quite a few issues with sibilance, and when I was using this on my podcast, I had to get quite aggressive with a de-esser to tame that down. But as I've said before, it has a controlled low end, it gives you a bit of a more mid-forward sound, nice and smooth mids but more forward, and then the top end is tame. I won't go so far as to say dark, but when you compare it against a lot of other modern microphones which are very boosted, this does come across more tame and more neutral but you still have that issue with sibilance. So you will likely need to use a de-esser for spoken word to avoid causing fatiguing audio for your listeners. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Audio-Technica AT4033A? Maybe. I do like how this microphone sounds, but it has some extremely steep competition. If we're only comparing this against Audio-Technica mics, over the AT2020, this thing is head and shoulders better than it. When we compare it to the AT4040, 
I think it sounds significantly better, tames a lot of the top end, gives you a nice smooth midsection. I just think this is a better sounding microphone. But when we start comparing it to microphones outside of Audio Technica, that's where it gets a little bit murky because for $270, you get the NT1. It's not the exact same sound, but a similar sound characteristic and $130 cheaper. If we want to look for a higher priced microphone, the Shure KSM32, similar sound character, much smoother top end, $200 more expensive, but a better sounding microphone in my opinion. So again, out of the Audio-Technica microphones I have used and reviewed, I think this is my favorite, but when we start looking outside of Audio-Technica, the competition gets much steeper, and it's really going to come down to what your budget is and what your personal sound preference is. If you like the sound of this microphone, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't get it, assuming you don't need sterile, super low noise recordings, and you just make sure that you're aware of what your monitors and headphones are set to when you're engaging the pad, I think it's a perfectly fine and very workable microphone. All right, that is it for this video. Inside Baseball, this is likely the only 4K video I will ever release. I wanted to experiment, but the import times, the file sizes, everything absolute nightmare to deal with so <laughs> this is the one and only 4k video you're ever gonna get if you do want a higher quality version of this audio i upload that to podcastage and i will link that in the description if you found this video fun interesting or helpful go ahead and give me a thumbs up hated it big old thumbs down i don't know what i say next if you want more videos subscribe do that if you want to hang out in discord and talk about microphones podcastage.com slash discord and if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here you can do so by clicking that join button or going to patreon.com slash podcastage and joining at the five dollar tier or higher it really does help me continue to bring you these videos so until next time thank you so much for watching thank you so much for listening you are amazing i love you you are the best and i will talk to you next week well